Hello friends, this video on Hello Alkanes and Hello Arenes Part 33 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. The next is 1 chlorobutane to N octane. So if you see, but to oct. So if you see N octane, so I have N chlorobutane to octane. 8, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So if you see, if you break this guy, so there are two butanes actually in this. That means I can just add two chlorobutanes, right, using sodium, Bush reaction. So I'll take two of these, one, two, three, four, Cl, add sodium and ether because that is required. This will Bush reaction, this, this I'll get C10H22, straight ones. It will be an, F, an octane. Pretty easy because if you see this, an octane, this is, if you split it, you actually get two of the chlorobutane. It's a free radical reaction again. The second is benzene to diphenyl. Here also pretty easy, you have a benzene, I have to convert into diphenyl. So if you see the diphenyl, how it, diphenyl, the way it is, it is nothing but two benzene added, right? So here also, if you can convert this benzene to some alkyl, right, halorene, uh, and then we can add, uh, use the same Rouge reaction. So let's do this. So let's do this. I have a benzene. Let's add something, any bromine, chlorine, anything I can add. Right? Using AlCl3 or something or FeCl3. It will give uh, me a bromine. On that, let me take two of these and sodium in presence of ether. Same, same again, Woods reaction. I'll get something like this. And this is 2NABR also. And this is my Woods reaction. Correct. Let's take more example. Why the dipole moment of chlorobenzene is less than chlorohexyl chloride? So let's draw first chlorobenzene. This is my chlorobenzene. And there is cyclohexyl chloride. This is my hexyl chloride. So if you see, these are my star carbon here. So here my star carbon is what? sp2 hybridized, you can see, 1, 2, 3. And here my star carbon is what? sp3 hybridized. So this has, this is less electronegative. Correct? And this is more electronegative. Correct? Now, the dipole moment depends on the difference in electronegativity between carbon and chlorine. This has I think 3.5, this is normal 2.5, let's suppose. Since this is more electronegative, let's assume this is 2.6. And this is a less electronegative, let's assume this is 2.4. I'm just assuming. So in this case, delta electronegativity between chlorine and carbon is what? 3.5 minus 2.6, that is 0.9. Here delta is what? Delta electronegativity between carbon and chlorine is what? 3.5 minus 2.4 that is 1.1 correct so if you see this is nothing but 3.5 and this is 2.6 here it is 3.5 2.4 so here if you see the electronegativity difference is more if the electronegativity difference is more chlorobenzene will get more dipole moment correct because the the difference is more so dipole moment is more the next question is why alkyl halide is immiscible in water though it is polar? Yeah, correct. Rx, if you see, we've explained this actually. This is minus, this is plus, this is slightly polar, but still it is not miscible in water. Why? Because see, for this to be miscible in water, there is a Rx bond, there is a HOH bond, right? So the energy required if if this is miscible in water, right? The force of attraction between these guys, solute and the water must be more than the force of attraction between solute, solute and water, water. Correct? Because there will be some Rx other molecules here, there will be some force of attraction and there will be some other H2O, uh, there will be some force of attraction. So this, the force of attraction which is here, which I will uh, which I'll draw in star, right? This force of attraction that is required should be more than these force of attraction. 
correct because here there is a dipole interaction rx rx and h2 h2 there is a hydrogen bond so this force of attraction between the solute and this is solvent and this is my solute is not more than the dipole dipole interaction hydrogen bond so it is not able to break that correct so the force of attraction between rx and h2 in this one star one is weaker it's weaker than the force of this dipole dipole interaction between rx and hydrogen bond in what so it is not able to uh, so the rx is not miscible in what explain why grignard reagent should be prepared under anhydrous condition so if you see rmg as i told is very very unstable if you have any moisture for example water will react and form rh and MgOHx. This is my Grignard region. It is very unstable. So that is why it has to be prepared under an anhydrous condition that is without any moisture. The next question is we have to fill these values, right? So C with it probe. It is one chloropropane reacting with sodium iodide in acetone with heat. This is if you see is ion exchange method. Sodium will iodine will replace chlorine. Correct. This is a halogen exchange reaction. This is a halogen exchange reaction, and this reaction is also called Finkelstein reaction. So the output of this will be this iodine will replace this chlorine. This becomes CH three, CH two, CH two I and NaCl. This is idopropane and sodium propane. Let's see this guy. This is alcohol and uh, KOH. This is alcoholic KOH. So what this does is it removes HPR. This is dehydrohalogenation reaction. Correct. So with this, it and this is my. If I find this, this is two bromo. 2 methyl propane. Yeah, this is 2 bromo 2 methyl propane. So the output will be CH3. C. Let me write this actually. Let me draw this. CH3 C. CH3 C. We are my longest chain. Right. So it is. It is 2 to dimethyl 1 bromo. Or 1 bromo 2 dimethyl meth ethane. That is the uh, this guy. Now, if I react with KOH, what will happen is one bromine will go and one of the uh, H will go. Any of these will go, it will give the same value actually because this is my alpha carbon and these are my beta carbon. So, it will give the same product. So, I will remove from one from here, let's suppose. So, what I will get is CH2, there will be double bond here. CH3 is still preserved. That's what I will get. Correct? Because I am removing one hydrogen from here and one bromine from here. So, I will get this bond. Plus, obviously, I'll get HBr and water. So the way it works is, see this, uh, my KOH. It reacts with ethanol, that is C2H5OH, right? So this gives what? This gives C2H5O minus, and actually. KOH gives K plus OH minus, right? So OH minus will react with hydrogen, it will form water, and this will give C2H5O minus. And it's a very strong base, very strong base. And that's why this is a very strong base, and it goes for elimination reaction. So this is a very strong base that is ethoxide ion and goes for elimination reaction, and we get minus HBr. Let's see this reaction. So I have CH3, CH, Br, CH2. CH3, NOH in water. So here also if you see, now NOH is a good nucleophile. OH minus is a good nucleophile. Right? It's a good nucleophile. So in that case, what will happen is this guy will replace this Br. So it will become CH3, C, OH, H, CH2, CH3. That's what will happen, and and this will be butane to all, right? This is 
since they are not given uh, stereo chemistry so we don't have to worry about the inversion now this is ch3 ch2 br with kcn again cn minus is a very good nucleophile it's a very big base cn minus is a weak base but very good nucleophile since it's a very good nucleophile will have will go for nucleophilic substitution reaction will not go for any uh, elimination reaction correct so cn minus will replace br so this will be ch3 ch2 cn and kbr this is cyclo sorry cyanoethyl correct so this will be my sn2 reaction this reaction is also sn2 reaction this is a very strong nucleophile and we have seen that cn minus is a very weak base very weak base but strong nucleophile so thus it will go for nucleophilic substitution reaction only let's see this now i have c6h5ona and react with c6h5cl so if you see this is ona is nothing but o minus na plus and this is a very good nucleophile correct so let's see the reaction i have this uh, c6h5o minus it will react with ch3 ch2 cl this is a good nucleophile right but not that great base so it will go for a substitution reaction and what it will form is CH3, CH2, O, C6, H5. It will kick this chlorine out and kick this. It is again an SN2 reaction. And it is used for ether synthesis actually. And plus, if you get NaCl actually, because Na plus and Cl minus will form NaCl. Correct. So this is my phenetol and this is my sodium phenoxide. Let's see this reaction. Meth ethro propanol with SOCl2. This is a very good method to prepare uh, chloropropane. So the output will be this with the chlorine and the sulfur gas and HCl. I'll give you the reaction mechanism for this. This is a very good method. Why? I'll tell you why. See what happens is. See, I have uh, meth ethro and all and I have SOCl2 correct so this the first thing happens is this H and Cl reacts it form HOCl and this SOCl2 is called thionyl chloride right so now what we can do is if with this what you get is 1 2 3 carbon and S now this chlorine will attack this carbon because of resonance will have a stable compound and now it will form 1, 2, 3 Cl and SO2 gas will come out. It's a very good product, uh, very good method to prepare chloro uh, alkyl group because the SO2 gas if you see it easily escapes out. It's a very good method to, say, uh, to, to convert alcohol to chlorides. Correct. The next is this guy uh, I have a alkene and I'm adding HBr in the presence of peroxide so it will go for anti marconica fruit correct so, so it will be uh, Br will be added here so it will be CH3 CH2 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 Br it is again a free radical reaction anti marconica fruit so we have seen this kind of reactions what happened is I have a let's suppose benzyl peroxide so I have pH COO O, C, O, P is my benzoyl peroxide, it breaks, so it gives pH, C, O, O, free radical and this you can see decarboxy relation, this becomes 2 pH free radical plus CO2. Now pH free radical, when it reacts with HBr, it gives pH plus Br free radical. Now this Br free radical will now react with this guy and due to hyperconjugation, if you add Br here, this becomes more stable compound right so we'll get anti marconic fruit so we have uh, discussed the mechanism in detail in class 11 so if you want to see you can watch the video on that where we explain that this is a normal addition of hbr in without um, any peroxide so it will follow a, a marconic rule so simply we'll add uh, br here and h here so let's do that ch3 c h and br will be here 
and C C H three two. There will be one H here. Correct. This will be two bromo two methyl butane. Two bromo two methyl butane. The question is write the reaction mechanism for this. I have N B U B R plus K C N. We have E T O H H two O. Give N. Thank you. Visit examfear dot com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.